Canadian society has a tendency to group people in terms of national identity and sort them into categories such as citizens, immigrants, refugees, forcing individuals to be representative for these titles. We fail to realize that these individuals, especially youth, who often don't neatly fit into these categories, have their own personal stories and experiences which often go unheard. The stories you are about to hear are just few voices from the men newcomer youth who are often forced to integrate into Canadian society while their individual journeys go unacknowledged. I was born in Thailand refugee camp. My parents are Karen and I lived in Burma before they went to the camp in Thailand. They had to leave Burma because of war between the Burmese military and the Karen people. I went to school in the refugee camp for nine years of my life and I have been in Canada since June 8th. It was like coming to a whole new world when I came to Canada. I saw people of all different cultures and backgrounds. In the refugee camp, we didn't learn about maps and I didn't learn anything about any other country. Buildings and houses in Canada were not made out of leaves, bamboos, and woods like our home in the refugee camp. After school and on the weekends, I delivered food for my dad in the camp because I knew my way around really well. Learning the language and getting around and meeting people was the hardest. The food was so different and I didn't know any of it. I never drank cold milk before coming to Canada and because we didn't know the food, my family only ate noodles. I had trouble communicating with those who were trying to help me because I didn't know the language and know how to tell people what, what I wanted to do. When I was in ESL, I had to listen to audiobooks to learn English, which took me about two years to learn. I had a really good relationship with my teachers, but it was really intimidating because I couldn't write or understand big numbers and words. I had to do a presentation of, about where I was from. That's when I found out how traumatic it was to give a presentation in front of everyone. In Thailand, we never did this. We only listened to the teacher. The condition of my school in Thailand refugee camp was really different from the schools in Canada. We used to get hit in school when we made spelling mistakes. It feels like the education is better in Canada, but I am less motivated here in Canada because there are a lot of distractions. Sometimes I'm also expected to understand and translate government letters and the hydro bills to help my family. Nobody ever taught me how to do this or what it all means. The school system in Canada did help me learn English because I had no choice. There wasn't any work in Korean or anyone who spoke it when I started school. Nobody could translate anything for me and there were no other Korean students. Now I don't have a lot of interest in anything like I did back in Thailand where everyone goes outside to play together. At recess and lunch, kids would go outside to play and go home to eat, rest, and go back to school. In Canada, there is so much pressure to answer the question of what do you want to be when you grow up? I hate that question. That's the biggest change. I'm from Burma and came to Canada because there was a lot of war and people were trying to kill our, our family. My parents went to Malaysia and I went to a village in India near the border of Burma. When I was five years old, I went there with my brother and an uncle and we carried my baby sister. We walked at night so that people would not see us. I went to school in India for three years because going to Malaysia to be with my parents again. I started school in Canada in grade 6 and didn't understand anything the teacher were saying. I was the only one who could speak Burmese. No, no teacher spoke Burmese in the school and no translator came to help me. I went to regular class. There was no ELD or ESL. I had extra help from another teacher which was good. One time I went to uh, ask to go to washroom but I couldn't ask so I just sit there. 
I was scared of a teacher because they were not from my country and don't speak the same language. In my school, I was the only student that was not white. The kid made fun of me and said, you can't speak English, write or do homework. They call me immigrant and made fun of me. The teacher will tell them not to do that. Teacher wouldn't let them let me go to the washroom when I asked in the class, but they would let that white kid go. The immigrant kid would get blamed by the English speaking kid because they spoke more English and can defend themselves, but we can because they, can, they speak better than us. I wish that immigrant students would not be made fun of in school for beginning different and not knowing English and that teacher will tell them not to make fun of us. It would have been much better for me if someone at the school spoke Burmese when I first came to Canada. I was born in Freetown, Sierra Leone in 2000 and moved to Guinea when I was nine years old. I came to Canada at the age of 11 years old and I started school in grade six. It was my first time, first time really going to school uh, because I had only gone to school for one month in Guinea and didn't go to school in Sierra Leone. In school, it was hard to understand the teacher. I couldn't complain when the other kids were bothering me. I felt that the other kids did not understand my situation. There are different types of classes in school, like music and art. They didn't have the classes in the school that I came from. I was really nervous uh, about, about them because I didn't uh, know uh, anything about them. Learning to read and write and was difficult for me and st is still a challenge. School should give refugees and immigrants extra help and stop putting them in random classes when they arrive. They should ask the student where they would like to be placed and listen to our opinions.